The question is that the words proposed to be made stand part of the question. I call the honourable member for Gorton. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I rise to uh, to speak to this bill, and uh, I do uh, so by starting to uh, respond to some of the comments made by the honourable member opposite. Uh, clearly, he is so out of touch with what's going on in the current industrial relations scene. He's so out of touch that it sounded like he was giving a speech in the 50s, never mind the 70s, 80s and 90s. And indeed, uh, most of the assertions he made, most of the assertions, and I think all of the assertions he made with respect to Labor's policy was entirely and utterly wrong. But it is true to say uh, today, Mr Deputy Speaker, that the debate we're having on this bill is no ordinary debate. This bill and the work choices laws it seeks to marginally amend is about what sort of country Australia is and what sort of country Australians want it to be, whether we want it to live to work or work to live. We know the Prime Minister. Before I go to the bill in particular, I want to say very clearly that Labor wants an IR system that is productive but fair. And Labor, not the coalition, despite the rantings by the member opposite, not the coalition, commenced the move from central wage fixation to enterprise bargaining, but we did so, Mr Deputy Speaker, without throwing fairness out the back door. So why is this bill not a su sufficient remedy for what ails work choices? Well, Mr Deputy Speaker, work choices is fundamentally flawed. It is unfair and unnecessary. It is complex and is not a system for a modern economy. Let's remember. The government spent $55 million of taxpayers' money trying to sell work choices and tell Australians that their employment conditions were protected by law. Now, of course, Mr Deputy Speaker, if that were true, if those very expensive commercials on television were telling the truth, I wouldn't be standing here at the dispatch box um, debating this tokenistic bill this morning. And it, is, and it is a token, Mr Deputy Speaker. It may well help some employees in this country. There may be some marginal improvement for some employees in some workplaces in this country, but it won't fix what's wrong with work choices. And it won't be fixed by sacking one minister, the minister who this morning moved to guillotine the debate on this bill. It won't be fixed by sacking one minister and replacing him with another, Mr Deputy Speaker. Mr Deputy Speaker, hockey might be the jockey, but it's still the same old horse. And what a nag it is, Mr Deputy Speaker. What a nag it is. If it entered the Melbourne Cup last members year, it would still be running. Mr Deputy Speaker, if it entered the Melbourne Cup this year, it would still be running. And the Gordon, Prime Minister ought Gordon, to know that changing, Gordon, a, horse's name, a, horse's name, changing a horse's name won't make it win any races. It might actually get you in trouble with the stewards, but it won't make you win <coughs> any races. And Mr Speaker, the government's in trouble. The government's in trouble, and let me tell the House why. When the Prime Minister referred to the Coalition's promises in the 2004 election campaign, there was no mention of work choices. On September 28, 2004, the Coalition's industrial relations policies were announced by the Prime Minister. In this announcement, there were no references to the weakening of the independent umpire, the abolition of the no-disadvantage test, the removal of unfair dismissal laws for employees employed by companies uh, with workers between 20 and, and 100, the primacy of Australian workplace agreements over collective agreements. In fact, the Prime Minister did not foreshadow any of the more radical elements now contained in work choices and not removed by this bill. Consequently, there was no mandate and I contend no confidence by the government that these policies had the support of the majority of Australians. In we know that the government need not have guillotined the bill. There are, there are many, many speakers, members in this House that wish to speak to this bill, representing their constituents in every state and territory. But they will be refused that right because the government will close down debate before the end of today. Close down debate so that members in this House will not be given an opportunity to speak. But I'd also imagine it's also to protect the government members who have been defending work choices for the last 18 months and they do not want to go on the record having to defend whatever improvements there might be, and there are some marginal ones I've conceded, and that's why we'll support the bill. The government doesn't believe in this set of laws. They don't believe in fairness in the workplace. They never have believed in fairness in the workplace. The only reason they're introducing this bill now is to save their political hide. The only job that this government concerns itself with is the Prime Minister's, does not concern itself with ordinary working families. Doing, working hard, the trying to pay off mortgages, and that's, and that's why this government's in major trouble, Madam Deputy Speaker.